Today I'm gonna to talk about college savings with the Coverdell Educational Savings Account, the ESA, Coverdell ESA. It's a great college funding strategy account. I'm gonna show you why. If this is your first time at our channel or you haven't subscribed, click on the subscribe button at the bottom. My name is Travis Sickle, Certified Financial Planner with Sickle Hunter Financial Advisors. The educational savings account. Now you can save into this account $2,000 per year. So you can put it into $2,000 per year, which is quite a bit of money. So you can use the Coverdell educational savings account for college expenses. Yes, you can use them for K through 12, but I'm not a huge fan of that. I'll explain why in just a couple of minutes. But let's go through some of the pieces to the Coverdell educational savings account that you need to know that are some of the quick facts. So you can put up to $2,000 each and every single year into an educational savings account. So if it is for your son or your daughter, then you can only put into two up to $2,000. Now, not everybody in your family can start contributing $2,000 to the same account. You can't do that. Each beneficiary, each child that you have can only have up to $2,000. So if your parents or your grandparents or somebody else is saving into an educational savings account and their and your son or daughter are the beneficiaries, you cannot also contribute $2,000. It's total amount. Total is $2,000. So $2,000, that's how much you can contribute into the educational savings account. Now, just like a Roth IRA goes in after tax, so this is money that you're getting in your paycheck, it's in your bank account, you're like, okay, what am I gonna do with this? I wanna save for college. That's when you put it into the educational savings account. Here's the benefit. The benefit is all that growth, so we're gonna invest these dollars, all that growth comes out tax-free as long as you use it for a qualified educational expense. And that's pretty broad. So you can use it for basically anything from K through 12 and for college planning. So if you're using it for college planning, anything you can, for, you can use it for books, tuition, room and board, basically anything you can write a check to the university for, you can probably use for the educational savings account. Now, you want to keep your receipt so you can justify what you're using the money that you're taking from the Coverdell. But that's, that's what it's for. It's basically an account that you're getting a tax benefit and you can have investments just like you can in your retirement account, and you can use these dollars for qualified educational expenses. If you're married filing jointly, it's $220,000 is the income limit in order to save into the Coverdell Educational Savings Account. You have to get your modified adjusted income below 220 in order to use the Coverdell Educational Savings Account. There are two pieces that often come up with the Coverdell Educational Savings Account or savings for college in general, and that's the American Opportunities Credit and the Lifetime Learning Credit. Now, these two credits you can use, but you can't double dip. So what does that mean? If you buy a set of books for $500, you can either apply it for the credits or the educational savings account, the ESA that you're using those funds from, but you can't do both. You can't double dip. That makes sense. You can use it for one or the other. So if you have a ton of expenses and you wanna use it to get the tax deferral or you wanna get your credit, it's one or the other. You get to choose. So that's usually something that you decide when you're filling out your taxes, not when you're trying to fund the account. But it certainly shouldn't be a reason not to fund your account and not to plan for educational planning. And the second one is making sure that the money comes out before the age of 30 for the beneficiary. Now you have 30 days when that beneficiary hits the age of 30 to get the money out of the educational savings account or use it. But of course you can roll it to another family member. So you can roll it down to this, the next generation or you can use it for a cousin or somebody else in the family. Now you can only transfer this once per year. However, you can do a trustee to trustee transfer all day long. So it's really just getting the right paperwork in order to make that transition. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal if you're using this or planning for college education planning. Of course, 18 is usually the start date or start age for college. So if your son or daughter isn't graduating within 12 years, I don't know, you probably look at something else. So you just have to make sure that this money is distributed before the age of 30. Okay, so that was a lot of the facts and there's probably other facts to look at the Coverdell Educational Savings Account that we might have left off. 
But here's why I like this account so much. More, here's the reasons why. So there, those are all the facts that we went over. Now we want to understand, should I choose it? Is this the, is this the account for me? Here's what I love about it. You can, you can control the investments. You can decide how aggressive or conservative you're going to be. When the 529 plans or the prepaid plans, you're kind of stuck with their own investments. So the 529 plans will have a select um, a, a select list of investments that you can choose, and you can be more aggressive or conservative, sure, but you can have a much greater control in the Coverdale Educational Savings Account than you can with the 529 or the prepaid plans. So the investment choices is by far my favorite aspect of the Coverdale Educational Savings Account. Now, if you like the investments inside of 529 or just wanna have the low rate of return from a prepaid plan that's extremely conservative, you can't. You can do those things, but if you're looking at saving, and usually when we're looking at saving, we wanna save the least and get the best rate of return or solve for that goal, a Coverdell Educational Savings Account could be just that bill. So that is the biggest reason why I love the Coverdell Educational Savings Account. It's because you can choose the investments. You're not restricted. There isn't a short list of investments that you can choose from. So you have greater control over it and really target the right rate of return for your particular situation. And you don't have to save in just a Coverdell. You don't have to choose just one. So if you have a 529 plan or you have a prepaid plan, this could also be a great supplement in addition to the Roth IRA. So if you're not really certain if you're gonna use all the money for college planning, you're not really sure what you wanna do with it, you could consider looking at a Roth IRA and a Coverdell ESA. So you can use those together. So the options are definitely open and it could definitely help you. So the Coverdell Educational Savings Account could be a great opportunity for you to start to save for college planning. Now, here's the reason why I don't like it for K through 12. So I don't like it for K through 12 quite as much as I like it for college planning is because the benefit is in the growth. You're getting this tax deferral and you can only put in 2000. So if you're using it in two, three, four years, you're not giving the account enough time to get enough growth out of it to really be worth your time. You're not getting the growth that you want out of, out of a Coverdell educational savings account if you're using it in two, three, five, or even 10 years. I'd like to see it further out. And the reason being is because you're not giving enough time to grow. So that's the benefit. So if you're, if you're only making a few extra percentage points and you're only saving on your taxes with those dollars, it really doesn't come out to be that much. It's really not a whole lot of money. So there's not enough of a benefit, and especially because you know that there's gonna be more expenses down the road, and you can only put in that 2,000. So while you can use it for K through 12 and the costs associated with it for qualified, qualified tuition or qualified, um, for any of the qualified expenses that you're gonna have, you can use it for K through 12, but that benefit just isn't, isn't nearly as great as if you fund it today for something that's 18 years down the road. And that tax, and that tax deferral benefit that you'd get, you'd get from the Coverdell works the same way as the 529 plans. So there really isn't a great fit for a short-term investment that's gonna get a high rate of return and it's really gonna benefit you tremendously. So if you don't have enough years behind it, it's not gonna grow enough and the benefit's just not gonna be as great, especially when you're already gonna have those expenses for college. Now, if you have college already paid for or another funding source and you just wanna get a small benefit, then maybe you could use the Coverdell Educational Savings Account, but it's not my first choice, neither is the 529. All the plans are meant for long-term growth in order to help you pay for something that's much further out than K through 12. Although, although you can pay for it, so if you want to, you can. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and leave your comments down at the bottom.